So if we're going through and doing this rebuild on this 671 and we went through and inspected the block and made sure everything was flat, there's no warpage across the top or anything. And then we went through and checked the head as well and make sure that everything was straight there. And we did purchase our rebuild kit from our friends over at Diesel Pro Power. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the piston rod from the piston. So we're gonna poke a hole through this little retaining cap, uh, pop it out and then we'll slide the wrist pin out and be able to remove that. And then just give it a whack with the hammer. Oops, pop it right there. Maybe get it. Okay. You get it? No. Mm -hmm. Then just pull it backwards and pop it. Okay. Slide that wrist pin out. And just tip it on its side and it should just fall out. are junk. We won't be reusing them, but it's definitely some wear on it. It doesn't look horrible. Set that down on the ground. After we install the wrist pin retainers, we need to make sure we do a vacuum test on them because if, if it's got a leak, it'll leak oil along the side of the piston and smoke terribly. So we're using this depth gauge to make sure, as we're fitting the liners, to make sure that the heights of the liners are properly set. Just go straight. If you just push it, just it'll go straight. Ready? Oh, that's a good fit. Okay, ready for the rest of the way? Crush rings, you want to go ahead and put them on there? Set that down. Now that we've got all the liners set, make sure everything is exactly the right height, they actually recess a little slightly below the head at the top of the block. And then this makes up the difference between the head and it. And it makes a perfect seal. You don't want to ever forget to put these on. Just a little bit. Now we're going to go with the coolant passages where we have little rubber o rings type gaskets that go and fill all these, and then the oil comes through on the end there. Okay, we got that all held in with grease, so it's not even thinking about coming out. You can bump it now and it, it won't pop out of there. All well, the gaskets are in, got some light tack on them. Ready for the head. Get the head going in. Perimeter gasket's all still in place. All the O-rings, I dropped two guide studs down, so it should follow them straight down. 
settings go down? Yeah, we wedged a little. Yeah, we're pretty close. I think we can start pulling it down with head bolts. It's all still in place. Okay, I'll start putting bolts in it. Some main bearings. The crank looks really good. No deep gouges. There's a couple tiny little dull grooves on it, but overall it's pretty good. Pretty darn good. It's turned thirty thousandths over, so there ain't really nothing we can do other than replace the crank. It can't be turned anymore. They don't make bigger than 30 thousandths anymore. They used to go to 60, but not anymore. Nobody, no manufacturer makes bigger than 30 now, 30 thousandths over. Not the prettiest one. What's your favorite brand of peanut butter? Mine's International Compound Number Two. Here's another crankshaft journal. This is the one with the thrust washers on the end. The thrust washers are in good shape. Cranks, that's really nice. It's hard to keep the camera lens clean on a job like this, but uh, that's main bearing. It's looking real good. That's all of our main bearings in order. Jonathan's torquing the last one in the background if you hear grunting. <laughs> Number one by far was the worst. But none of them were horrible. The engine didn't die from old age. It got overheated and that's what the problem was, so. Okay, we're getting ready to do the tune up on the top end, setting the valve clearances and then fuel injector timing. So we're barring the engine over there. And this is a two valve head. So these are uh, exhaust valves. We set them with a .013. Uh, you get a smooth pull on that, and then you tighten the nut down, then the 013 should no longer fit, but a 011 will fit. So that's our firing order for this left-hand engine. 
142635, left hand rotation 671. So we're, as we're setting it, it makes it easy to know, know that. So here he's just sliding that feeler gauge in the exhaust valve. Getting it where it's a nice smooth pull with the 13. Just the right amount of resistance? Yep. Good. Beautiful, properly clearanced edges. I'm going to move some air now. Got this flapper freed up. They drilled a hole through it here and put a cotter pin through it to stop it. We got that out, but it was still seized up. It was. This is a steel rod through an aluminum housing and it didn't like it. So it must've been self-deploying. Sometimes this little catch here will vibrate out of here. Can you, can you pull that pin up? Yeah, and once that pin goes up a little bit higher. Yeah, there you go. And then this slam shut, that cuts off the air to the engine. So sometimes it self-deploys, that little thing wiggles up and allows us to trip. So that's probably what was happening while they put a cotter pin through it. I'm going to drop it back down. Um, but it was seized, so we put some heat on it with a map gas torch. Uh, kept using some liquid uh, penetrant oil, and then we finally got it freed up, and now, now it moves in there nicely. So that's the emergency flapper. So if the engine goes wrong, you can cut the air off and shut it down. Oz is going to go ahead and polish, clean and polish this aluminum air intake part here. Uh, it's cast aluminum, so it'll look pretty when it's done with the GM General Motors on there. Well, at 4.45 Eastern time on Friday afternoon, we noticed we have a problem with the blower. If you look at this, both ends of this housing here are the same shape, but our part, the plate that goes on here, well, one end is round and one end is the same shape as the current blower. So this end is right, but this end is not right. And we have a big gap top and bottom here where oil would just pour out of this blower. So we got to try to get the right caps to go on the end of this. I have a spare blower here on the property and it's got the same curved ones like this. So we can't just steal them from that. Well, that was horrible timing to have the notice that so late on a Friday where we can't get parts shipped out until Monday, which even if we overnight them, we can't have them until Tuesday. And depending on how late they get here Tuesday, we probably won't be able to have this thing running until Wednesday. So Oz is stuck here for a few more days, which is good for my bus because that means he can continue to <laughs> polish and, and work on that as well. Lenny's looking so sharp right now.